In this video, we're going to solve a problem involving projectile motion at an angle. Here's the question that we're going to solve. I'm going to read through this question, and as I read it, I'm going to underline the given information in green, and then what the question's asking for in red. This will help me to solve the problem later. A soccer or football player kicks a ball with a velocity of 25.3 meters per second at an angle of 28.4 degrees above the ground. How far does the ball travel before it hits the ground? So here's what the question is saying, that a soccer player is going to kick a ball, it's going to have an initial velocity, it's going to travel here in kind of a parabolic uh, motion there, and then we're going to calculate this right here, I'm going to call it delta x, the distance that it travels before it impacts the ground over here. So the first thing to do with the projectile motion problem at an angle is to draw the vector that we're starting with. So I'm going to draw this 25.3 meter per second vector and it's at an angle of 28.4 degrees. Now in this problem we're assuming that air resistance doesn't play a factor and that the motion is going to be perfectly parabolic. And so it's going to be this distance right here that we're solving for and I call that delta x. Now anytime we have projectile motion we really have two problems in one. Uh, it's really tough to analyze a situation where a, a, you know an object's moving in two dimensions at one time. So what I want to do is I want to think of this ball as moving up and down because it is. It's going to move up and then it's going to move back down. I can think of that as just going straight up and back down and just moving horizontally. So what we can do is we could split it into a vertical component and a horizontal component. Now usually what you're going to be solving for in a problem uh, dealing with projectile motion is going to be the horizontal distance. That's what we're doing in this problem. That is delta x. And to solve for that I can use a really simple equation which is the velocity in the x direction is going to be equal to distance. I call that delta x or change in the position in x over time. So that's a really simple equation. I rearrange that to solve for delta x. It's velocity in the x direction times the time. And the time is referring to the time that the ball is actually in the air. Almost always what you're doing in a projectile motion problem is you're trying to find time uh, over here with the vertical component. So this is where you're going to get the time. And the thing that relates these two vertical and horizontal, these two components, is time. So the time will be the same over here. So we're going to find time on the vertical side. We're going to transfer that over, and we're going to find delta x, since time will be the same. Now usually, when we're dealing with projectile motion at an angle, almost always we're going to be working with the first equation of motion, which is the final velocity, and I'm going to say in the y direction, is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction plus acceleration times time. And with the vertical component, we're really dealing with a situation where the object is going up and then it's coming back down. So the only thing that's going to be uh, acting on this object, the only force, is going to be the force of gravity. And so I can change this a to a g because g is a constant and g stands for 9.81 meters per second squared and this is the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so I have these two equations. Here's the one I'm going to use for the vertical component. I'm going to solve for time. I'm going to take the time, I'm going to bring it over, and I'll be able to solve for the distance over here. So I need velocity in the y direction, and I need velocity in the x direction. Here's where the vector components come into play. So I have this vector at an angle. It has a vertical component, and it also has the horizontal component. I'm going to draw this one in blue down here, just like that. So this would be Vx, and then over here, this would be Vy. And I can even say that's V initial in the Y, because that's initially um, going to be its velocity as it starts going upwards. So I can just use some trigonometry to find the sides here. So this is the opposite side of this angle. So I set up sine of the angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And so really I'm saying it's the velocity initial in the y right here 
over the hypotenuse, which was the original vector. And so I'm going to solve for velocity initial in the y and find that that is equal to 12.0 meters per second. And so this is how fast it's moving when it first starts out right down here traveling upwards. Now eventually it's going to reach the, reach the top of the motion. It's going to hit zero and it's going to start coming back down. Right before it hits the ground we know what it's what we'll call the final velocity. I could say the final in the y is going to be as well. This is going to be equal to the same magnitude as our initial velocity because it just is going to go up to zero and it's going to start accelerating back down uh, to the same velocity. I'm just going to change it slightly and put a negative sign in front of it because we're traveling downwards at that point. And so if I'm, if I'm calling up direction positive, I want to call it down direction negative. Now if I look at everything, I have all the different pieces of the puzzle here to fit into my equation and I can solve this equation for time. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've rearranged it here to solve for time. That's just this equation here. And I'm going to plug in the numbers. And so here is the final velocity. That's right here. And I made sure to count that negative sign in here. And I subtracted from that the initial velocity. That was 12.0. Remember, it's positive because it's going upwards initially. And that's divided by g, the constant 9.81 meters per second squared. And that's a negative value because gravity goes downwards. Since I said the final velocity is negative and it's going downwards, anything going down has to also be negative. So when I calculate time, I get 2.45 seconds. And so this is how long the ball is going to stay in the air. This is the thing I can now transfer over to the horizontal side. And so the horizontal side, I am solving for delta x. I want to know how far it traveled. Remember, I'm going to use this equation right here. And so I just need to know the velocity in the x direction. That's this part, this component here. So I want to find this component right here of this vector. And so I could use the cosine of the angle, this angle here is 28.4 degrees, uh, is going to be equal to the adjacent side, which is the one I'm looking for over the hypotenuse. And so really I'm just saying velocity in the x over the hypotenuse, which is 25.3 meters per second. I can solve for velocity in the x. So velocity in the x is equal to 22.3 meters per second. And now I have all the pieces of this puzzle right here. I have velocity in the x I just found, and I have time, which remember time relates between vertical and horizontal. So let's go ahead and plug those into the equation. And we end up with 54.5 meters. And so that's our final answer. That's how far the ball traveled before it hit the ground. So just to recap, when we're dealing with projectile motion at an angle, we split up this angle into a vertical component and a horizontal component. The vertical component we use to solve for time. I use the first equation of motion. Once we have time, we transfer that over to the horizontal component and we can find distance in the x. And so that is projectile motion at an angle.